Hi there, my pro friends. This is Jake Marmer with Canon Challenge for week six. And it's funny to uh, Canon Challenge the beats because uh, they certainly thought of themselves as the challengers of the Canon. Um, they wanted to sing the margins uh, famously. Of course, the the best minds of the generations were destroyed by madness and uh, starving hysterically naked. Like, these are not uh, exactly establishment kind of figures. And um, they also didn't necessarily think of themselves as, um, uh, what's the right word, canonizable. Canonizable? Probably not, I, in so far as they. Um, as Ginsburg said, you know, what beats? We were just, you know, a bunch of guys who couldn't get published. Um, but, uh, you know, a bunch of guys is exactly uh, right. You know, if you Google the beats or beatniks, you know, you get these photos of um, a bunch of guys uh, standing together in cool caps and long scarves and uh, trench coats with arms slung around each other on some urban street drunken with brotherly love probably on the road towards self-romantization or romantization of um, the beat ideals which in truth many of them rejected and, and, and uh, felt uh, ambivalent towards but but uh, in addition to you know Ginsburg and Kerouac uh, of course these uh, widely canonized uh, figures of the beat movement, William Burroughs, Michael McClure, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, Gary Snyder, uh, these, these were all men and uh, they, were, they were all white men. Therein lies a canon challenge. Um, although I should also just point out, of course, um, when it comes to challenging canons and, and thinking about diversity, there are different kinds of diversity that's, that's worth, uh, you know, exploring. And um, uh, the, the beats, um, many uh, of them did come from, um, you know, what in 1950s was thought of as, as, a, as a pretty diverse, um, you know, kind of pool of backgrounds. Uh, and... Uh, uh, for 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 example, you know, Kerouac uh, came from a, a very um, economically disadvantaged, uh, very insular, conservative, not English-speaking uh, family of French Canadians who lived in in, in New England, um, and uh, he was in Colombia on uh, on a football uh, player scholarship, and. Uh, uh, Ginsburg, uh, of course, was was Jewish, um, also um, um, child of immigrants, and uh, was queer, openly queer, and, and um, certainly um, at times um, did not feel at home in in America as it then was, which you know became a subject of his writing. Um, all of that uh, said. Um, the canon challenge I want to uh, think about is is a number of writers, important writers and poets, um, who were also part of the larger beat scene, um, and who are, who are not talked about uh, as much as you know uh, Ginsburg and, and 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 Kerouac and and uh, others that I. Uh, just named uh, a little early in the piece, and so a few folks I wanna I wanna mention. Um, one is Diane De Prima, uh, a great great poet and writer, um, and I very often think about her poem Rant, her iconic poem Rant, where she says, "The only war that matters is the war against the imagination," um, and uh, I I love that um, line and think about it often and it becomes becoming only more and more uh, true and, and only more and more relevant um, now uh, there's so much information coming and so much um, is imagined for us um, and uh, all the more reason I appreciate Modpo and a space where imagination uh, 
is celebrated and, and the great imaginers uh, I, I held up and, and thought about and talked about with room uh, for our own imagination as we read uh, them and think about them. But uh, in any case, the end, De Prima's uh, uh, memoir called Recollection of My Life uh, as a Woman uh, really... Um, uh, gets into the time and space and, and, and her own work and is, is an incredibly written um, written memoir and another memoir that I I, I want to raise up here is um, is a is a memoir by Hetty Jones called how I became Hetty Jones um, and again also a tremendous writer and, and poet um, an educator too um, she in in the memoir she's recalling um, the world that uh, the beats were part of and she was part of um, and it's it's an it's an incredible literary work and uh, one of the, the things that she talks about is um, her marriage uh, to Leroy Jones uh, Mary Baraka and and subsequent divorce and of course uh, Amiri Baraka is another really important character um, who was uh, um, uh, both as a poet and a publisher of small literary journals was really important um, for the beat movement um, the Black Mountain um, poetry collective uh, New York poets um, kind of like that um, that whole that whole group um, that he published in in his magazines um, and was part of uh, until um, 1965 when after assassination of Malcolm X uh, um, he um, he moved um, away from the that that scene. He um, founded the Black Arts Movement, and um, in fact, uh, he critiqued um, the Beats um, as being um, complicit in what he saw as institutionalized uh, racism, and um, critiqued very publicly um, artists. Um, that he previously uh, uh, associated with and um, it was a very public break and, and a really really uh, important moment of reckoning and a really important moment of uh, American uh, literary history um, in a way it was also the end um, um, of the beat movement by 1965 uh, of course these writers continued and wrote a, a, a great deal more but um, the momentum of, 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 of the beat uh, I, I think that that really um, that really marked um, that, that really marked the end of it um, okay so so these these three names I mean, I'm just putting putting them out there Dan Di Prima, Hedy Jones and, and Amiri Barak, and there are so many more. Thank you.